phenomenology. Uh, the phenomenology you are going to read uh, uh, is uh, Husserlian phenomenology. As uh, you already know or, or you'll discover, uh, there are certainly different kinds of phenomenology. Husserl was uh, the founder of phenomenology. In, uh, he was born in 1859 and died in 1938. Before Husserl, of course, the word phenomenology was used by Hegel, Kant, uh, Lambert and uh, others. Uh, the way in which we mean phenomenology here is uh, strictly Husserlian. Uh, Merleau-Ponty, um, Ricoeur, uh, Henri, they will develop phenomenology in other directions. So what is phenomenology for Husserl? Uh, phenomenology for Husserl is uh, the logos, uh, again, the science, uh, to phenomeno. What is the phenomeno? The phenomeno is uh, uh, what uh, phenomai, uh, or better, <coughs> finitai. It's what uh, appears to us. So phenomenology is the science uh, that uh, studies uh, what uh, appears to us. That's why one of the motto, uh, one motto of phenomenology that is uh, written in uh, Prolegomena, uh, that is in the introduction to the logical investigations, is uh, back to the things themselves. We want in phenomenology to come back to the thing itself as it discloses itself. And in order to do this, uh, we describe this layer of appearances uh, that uh, uh, are given to us. That's why the phenomenon is also described as a given, as something that is a datum in Latin, the same. It's something that is given to us. Now, Husserl's phenomenology was developed in two different phases, and uh, um, he developed uh, uh, two approaches to phenomenology, a static and a genetic approach. The genetic approach is uh, more recent. I believe that uh, a genetic and static approach has to be considered as one complementary to the other. We can consider uh, the static approach first and then the genetic. I think that they are like uh, uh, two eyes that uh, um, are useful to look at the phenomenon. If we close one eye, uh, then we'll look at the phenomenon in a way that is uh, related to just that eye. And the same if we close the other eye, we'll get a different perspective. So we need to keep in mind, or to continue the metaphor, to keep both eyes open in order to describe more fully the phenomenon. So, chronologically, it's true, the static approach precedes the genetic one. Conceptually, I think that they should be used together. And there are traces for which we uh, can uh, consider that Husserl, uh, in analysis concerning active and passive synthesis, uh, was using uh, both approaches at once. So, uh, from uh, the static uh, point of view, from the static eye, uh, the description of the given is uh, um, worked out from uh, the eye viewpoint. So, this, uh, the object is described as it is, as it was given to an eye. Uh, and uh, the logic that he described from this point of view is uh, the logic of uh, logical investigations. So it's uh, a logic meant as the study of uh, the what, the what that is given to me as uh, res cogitans, again, as uh, a subject that thinks about what is given. A uh, genetic approach, uh, instead, uh, is uh, an approach that uh, follows the constitution of the eye. The description of the given, in fact, uh, is not uh, yet distinguished from the description of the eye. So, there, uh, uh, again, uh, the, uh, the, um, the 
comparison with uh, Badiou here comes easy and I'd say with the stoicism too because uh, uh, there's this uh, uh, materiality or um, to use uh, Lacan's word uh, this demands uh, that uh, looks for uh, a subject uh, to be and this subject is not there yet so there might be the human being uh, but not necessarily a subject that is ready yet to um, put uh, this uh, uh, meaning, uh, this essence, uh, this what uh, into a form. So the logic uh, that we can find related to this approach uh, is uh, the logic that he described in experience and judgment uh, or uh, in uh, formal and transcendental logic is later words. In this case the science is, logic is described as a science of constituted meanings and this constitution is a constitution that involves the meanings and the eye at the same time. So as it concerns uh, the description of logic uh, as it was uh, in uh, Logical Investigations, which is a book that you are not required to read. Uh, um, the study of uh, this what, of this meaning, uh, starts uh, through the study of uh, the linguistic uh, clothing. Uh, logical investigation number one. Stoicism, we saw how logic was a propositional logic, an analysis of uh, arguments of uh, what could be asserted. In a similar way, uh, Husserl's work starts with the study of grammar. Uh, one footnote that is interesting to mention, both Husserl and Badiou starts uh, uh, or are involved with uh, uh, mathematics. In Husserl's case, uh, he starts uh, with mathematics, he's a mathematician, uh, and uh, phenomenology starts uh, with the analysis of numbers. Again, the problem of multiplicity becoming one and being uh, multiple at the same time. Uh, uh, grammar is another way to express this problem. How is it that S is P, uh, D, X, uh, and so on. How can B1 and multiple at the same time? Then the analysis in that sense proceeds with uh, uh, the analysis of the theory of parts and whole in the third and fourth logical investigation. Of course, uh, this is a, a very general analysis of the book because as for every book I'm citing here in this video, uh, there is uh, plenty to say and uh, the discourse is very complex here I'm just giving the outline of the discourse. So <clears throat> in the third and fourth logical investigation Husser examines the region of objects in general as individual and species. So uh, again how is it that this S uh, so what I'm uh, directly experiencing uh, is, uh, so it's a real being that is connected to uh, this meaning uh, who is, uh, that uh, represents uh, a, a, a totality, a, a, a specific uh, um, uh, uh, genus, a specific uh, uh, quality to this, uh, uh, to this uh, essence. And uh, in the fifth and sixth uh, logical investigation, uh, Husser uh, um, describes this problem uh, through intentionality. So uh, what uh, I know, what comes uh, to existence uh, through meaning uh, is uh, the meant which means uh, is uh, what uh, is uh, uh, present in my act of meaning. So in order to be phenomenologist, uh, you need to interrupt the natural attitude through which you are describing, uh, through which you are living, through which you are uh, entertaining a relationship with life, and you need to describe the intentional essence, meaning this act that is bridging yourself with a specific content. And at this point, the intentional essence uh, will be um, uh, described as uh, um, 
uh, matter quality and I'd say uh, well matter and quality uh, where uh, matter is uh, uh, what is meant and the quality is the way by which uh, I meant it uh, fifth logical investigation so uh, my statement uh, uh, S is P is a statement that comes from an intentional act in which the matter S is P is given in the form of S is P as a statement. So <clears throat> the content matter is one with the way through which something is given and is excited by, is provoked, uh, is uh, triggered by the kinetic, I would say with a little language, by the uh, material, by the life I'm naturally living. So the intentional act is this beziehung auf, is this referring to uh, something that is uh, given to me. So it's something that involves uh, uh, the position taking of the eye, it's uh, something that uh, involves uh, a reflection, and uh, it's something that involves uh, the uh, meaning as meant. Uh, in uh, uh, experience and judgment, uh, um, since uh, is uh, a genetic uh, uh, approach that is used on logic, we start from the same position. How is it that the judgment S is P is a valid judgment uh, and it expresses something true? Uh, and again, the meaning is rooted in being. Uh, it's uh, again, uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's rooted in the matter. It's uh, as as you write in experience and judgment section 93 is what is uh, pre-constituted in this continuous con coincidence of uh, an identity so it's a, a concrete essence that uh, is uh, uh, that that uh, uh, refers to um, uh, a given that coincide with uh, with the meant uh, the difference here is that uh, intentionality is uh, uh, meant uh, in a uh, minimal way, in the sense that uh, it doesn't involve uh, the position taking of the eye because it describes the emergence of the eye. Uh, uh, so uh, meaning is constituted uh, with the constitution of the subject. Again, uh, I don't want to force it, but I see a, a, a strong compatibility with uh, um, the notion of operation of Badiou. Uh, in Husser, uh, we uh, use, we find the word functioning, uh, Leistung. But again, uh, the truth uh, is what uh, uh, emerges uh, with, uh, uh, with, the, with the subject that functions in such a way uh, that uh, it uh, uh, makes valid uh, the meaning, uh, the multiplicity of meaning that uh, is coming. The big difference that I would <clears throat> uh, emphasize, and in that sense I think that Badiou is uh, a richer point of view, is that uh, while in Husserl uh, the heterogeneity is uh, reduced in uh, groups of uh, homogeneity, that's how the truth uh, comes to the uh, surface, uh, in uh, Badiou uh, the heterogeneity uh, keeps uh, being alive. So experience and judgment uh, will find this logic that is distinguished in apophantic logic and truth logic. The apophantic logic is the logic of uh, predicates, assertions, uh, statements, uh, and uh, it's uh, a, 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 a formal ontology, meaning uh, it's a way uh, through which uh, we make uh, the being uh, assertible, uh, which we give uh, address uh, to the chaotic uh, elements that uh, form the being. And this apophantic logic is the logic of grammar, again, same path 
as the logical investigations and the logic of non-contradiction. In the logic of grammar, uh, we study sentences, so it's the theory of forms of judgments as they are combined and confused with each other. In the logic of contradictions, we study propositions uh, and their consistency as they are distinguished uh, and distinct from each other. What is interesting here, and this is the part that you are going to read, is uh, the affective force. Uh, and remember what we studied uh, with uh, um, uh, stoicism, the motivational, uh, uh, oh sorry, uh, the motivational force uh, uh, that uh, is at the basis of uh, uh, homoiosis uh, and uh, energeia. So uh, the motivation, of course, that is at the basis of uh, uh, validations. Uh, we are, uh, again, incredibly in the same field, although Husserl doesn't mention uh, Stoicism and it's a tradition that is not taking into consideration. Uh, but uh, mm, I guess that humanity goes through the same efforts over and, and over. Uh, so there's this uh, affective force uh, that uh, um, impinges upon the pre predicative layer. Uh, so what is uh, before, uh, uh, but you would say the count, uh, before uh, the predicate, uh, before uh, we put in one uh, something. And uh, this pre-predicative layer is the layers of uh, passive synthesis. Passive synthesis are uh, uh, synthesis that are not spontaneous uh, and non-spontaneous. The spontaneous synthesis is the synthesis between uh, affectant and affected. Uh, they are fused together, so it's uh, my being impressed, uh, to use uh, a stoic language, uh, by, I don't know, the sound of a car from uh, outside, and uh, uh, the car that in fact exists outside and is affecting me. So I am that experience, Nishida a Japanese uh, philosopher who studied logical investigations and brought phenomenology into the Japanese and Buddhist tradition, wonderful work, uh, talks about a direct experience, a pure experience, I am the object, which is something that we find in phenomenology, the dichotomy between subject and object uh, falls exactly here, uh, drops here in the pre-predicative layer where the constitution of the subject that is coming to be is not yet there and there's the fusion uh, that uh, allows uh, the synthesis of meaning that needs to find a form. Then it's on the non-spontaneous layer that we need the validation, the consent, using uh, the uh, stoic uh, vocabulary or uh, the act of decision, uh, um, the event, using Badiou's term, through which we transform in predications and structures uh, the event, uh, this uh, motivational force that uh, um, uh, found itself a way through uh, a logical uh, formulation. Uh, so a, a, a experience and judgment uh, is a genetic way, is a book in which uh, we see the genetic approach uh, that Husserl uses uh, through uh, the constitution of meaning uh, and uh, sense. In uh, the next video we'll see uh, Merleau-Ponty uh, um, uh, discussion of uh, consciousness uh, and the acquisition of language. So the way in which uh, we transforms uh, these uh, meaningful events uh, in a full-fledged uh, language.